we are live. And so welcome, uh, Void Byte is always there. And then, uh, so today what we're going to do is we're going to do a quick one. And I wasn't sure where I was going to do it, but actually I'm, I think I'm going to do more or so of these short lives, which could be a JC take or which could be something on a new feature. And today what we're going to talk about is a new lead chain, which has finally been stabilized inside uh, Rust 188 that has been released yesterday. And that is awesome. So I'm going to do a quick overview of what is that and what is cool. So if you go to the Rust blog over there, you will see they have done the release and they have cool things about, I mean, sexy stuff about, you know, naked function and so on. But this is for more like C developers and assembler and all of that. So that is kind of uh, in the low level. But the one at the higher level, which is very good for us, is the let chain, which allows us to do this kind of things here, where now you can have a let, multiple let inside the same, um, um, the same if let, but also being able to deconstruct. So here we take the V and then we are going to use a V over there. And so that is pretty nice. So rather to just look at the example, we're going to look at it of how it looks like in the code. So I have this code over there. And what we're going to do, actually, I might be able to do a one like that. OK, so what I do is um, cargo watch dash Q dash C dash X and run Q. So that is what I like. And this usually will do uh, something like this, print LN and I have a uh, hello world. So that is what I like to do. And then I would do that. It will um, print that. So that is pretty nice. So now one of the good thing here that how we can use this if light business, let's say that we have an input. And this obviously is going to be a very simple use case, but I just want to show it in a simple way, and then we can use it in more complex way when we're going to code in our other lives. So let's say that we have an input and it's some sort of text and the text might or might not be a number. Now we want to do a, if, we, what we want is to say, we want to print if it's a number above 10 or we want to say it's not a number or it's below 10, for example. So usually we will do a kind of if let sum, if let sum, and then we'll do something there or a kind of a match and all these kind of things will be kind of a little bit tricky. And because a parse will also return a result, then we'll probably have some sort of nested things. But now what we can do is actually if let sum. And so we're going to have our input here. We're going to call it um, S, our string, equal input. And so now I'm going to toggle the inlay. We have our string here. So far, so good. Now, what we can do is, and we know that the example here to say print ln and then say not a number or above 10. Okay. So now what we want is to also parse it to make sure it's a number. But the cool thing with a let chain, so you have to make sure that you do a Rust up update to make sure that you have Rust 88. Yeah? So this one is there. So you have to make sure you have that. You don't have to specify it in your cargo, but you have to make sure you have it. And if you create use that features, you should probably put the Rust version over there. So now that we have this, what we're going to do is we're going to see uh, and, and we're going to do, we're going to do the end like that. And then we're going to do a let, okay, because we want to pass it, and that will be our number. It goes a go, the go style here, and we do a s dot pass, and that would be i thirty two for example. So now it's cool, yeah, because we took the s of this guy. And then we can reuse it in the next one. And then we can even combine it with normal Boolean business. So that's why this example is about. Yeah? As I broke the thing. 
and we can compile it, uh, combine it with the n greater than 10. And say uh, println number, and we can do uh, n is greater than 10, which is true. And then if we go to, go to our cargo watch, we have this. And obviously, if we do this, we go to this one. Yeah. So that is pretty cool now because we can um, do this kind of uh, combine let this way. And then that becomes much more efficient than having to have nest. So that is pretty cool. Now, one of the things which is cool as well when we're doing the coding and, and so on is we might want to have some expensive let's say that the parse is expensive and in a way it's more expensive than the rest here if we wanted to have like a flag for example it's, it's going to be silly here but check num and we put false then we can put there check num like that and and so now the nice thing about this pattern here again is we can combine the, va the values. So sometimes we might have a logic where we say, well, I don't, depending on what I have above. Yeah, so for example, actually, we, we can do something a little bit silly here, but it's good. We can have the check num. Let's say that we want to have a flag to say we don't need to check. And then we can have the string here and then we pass. But then what we could say to say, well, we know, and I actually don't know, I could ask uh, ChatGPT, I guess, um, 128 number, U128, which is probably the biggest number, it probably has a limit of number of characters, obviously a length. So probably we don't need to say if it's over U28 or I32 in this case, we don't need to, to parse it because we know that we're going to be bound by that limit of characters. So I don't know what is the limit of characters here. So I'm, I'm going to say something silly. And I'm going to say if s length is inferior 100. It's silly here. It's not 100. But this, this should be the max char length of a sign. So it needs to be sign, yeah? Because one more uh, i32 or whatever we pass in there. And so now the cool things about this logic now is where here we might have a flag to say, hey, don't do the expensive guy. Then we extract the value. Then here we say, if it's over whatever the maximum numbers here, we don't need to worry about it, number of characters. And then we parse it. And if it's not, we fall here. And if it's there, we fall there. That's become very cool. Yeah. Now, the cool thing about this is that we can, that was the other example here that I prepared a little bit, is we can actually have a vector. So let's say that for whatever reason, we have an iterator. So we have a let mute inputs, and we are going to have a vect, and it's going to be 300, and then it's going to be ddd, and then it's going to be uh, some number, but not at the end. Okay, something like that. And we're going to do a into iter. Okay, and, and the goal here is just to have an iterator, just to show we're going to see. Because now we're going to learn how to do the while let business. We're going to remove that for now. There. This one was a little bit silly, but now we can do a while let sum and then boom, boom, boom. And that should be pretty good. And look at this. We should have one. And kaboom. That's fine. Sorry about this. And here's input. Next. Okay. This is problem with live here. I would have edited that in my videos, such as I look smarter. So now I do input next, and now that is an iterator, remember? So now we'll move and kaboom. That is interesting. 
oh no no I'm sorry I, I am the one slow okay here okay forget about it so if I were going to do that and I will put the 10 here it works perfectly yeah yeah it's a while so it will stop at the first time it breaks so here we have the 100 first so that will say hey you know 100 is greater than 10 all happy and then we have the tree but three is a number but is lower so it it goes it is not printed but it's after i have 200 this one won't be printed as well because we stopped at this guy this guy caused to stop here so this is pretty cool yeah yeah uh, sorry George. it's somehow i was getting excited in my if let and i messed it up so you you're right um drudge so that is a thing. So it works beautifully here. Yeah. So we stop at the first thing that it gets wrong. Obviously, I got uh, my brain got uh, fried somehow. And then when you do the if, then we have the whole if let kind of things. So that's it. That was kind of a very quick live that I wanted to to show. And um, hopefully that will be useful. If you have any questions, feel free to ask questions. Today, we are going to probably do a live around 10.30 or something like that in 45 minutes or something like that about Ratatouille, the part two. Um, so we did one yesterday. I'm going to put it public. I had to do some edits, uh, but it's still alive. And then we're going to go to the Ratatouille where I'm going to learn Ratatouille live with, uh, with anybody that want to join. So if you want to join, feel free to join. And um, then that's it. So that is the iflet. And it's actually what I could do is I could still do something like that, such as in one screen, we're going to have any stuff. So that will be our iflet. Iflet. And that will be our while let chain if let chain and while let chain and uh, here it is so that is this guy and then the one with a while that guy and then obviously we could do a sync yeah so if one of these guys okay now i'm curious if we have uh, fn i don't have tokyo but you could do an async here a wait and that uh, might be beautiful for when you do event-based kind of things with uh, Tokyo stuff. So I think that will be concluded today. And um, well, no, that was my brain. Uh, my brain kind of was in a parallel universe. It's, I, it was all my fault here on this slide. But that's the problem of the live. Yeah, you never look as smart as uh, you would like to be. But we ended up, we landed back in our feet. So that is pretty cool. And then in 45 minutes or so, I'm going to do a live about the, um, the Ratatouille kind of things uh, that I want to continue to learn because I want to have my AI pack using Ratatouille. And I'm familiar with Ratatouille, but I want to learn it more. And there's a lot of, of the best practices that we have in doing a cloud application or even a Tori application that applies to real big, I mean, complete Ratatouille app. It's the same kind of business. You want to have a model uh, manager and model controllers and all these kind of things, such as you can build kind of a, a full UI in web or uh, terminal. Okay, hopefully that was useful. And until next one, happy coding. And thank you for everybody uh, saying nice uh, comments. <laughs>